there you go. Alright, so man, what's the real story behind Vino, man? How did he get started? Well, he started off. Let's see, how, how can we kick this off? Uh, it started way back in history. No, I'm just playing. Uh, he was a young guy, young Chi-Town guy, hang with his big brothers, you know. Yep. Uh, and we, we are musically eclectic, i put it that way, as far as hip-hop. As far as all genre of music, but um, the hip hop really connected us, and he connected with us and the hip hop. Therefore, it was a teaching, it was a conditioning, I guess you could say. And he liked what he hear, and since he was liking what he was hearing. We gave him more. <laughs> we fed him more. And when you feed people more, they grow. You know, they, they, they get bigger. They expand. Their knowledge expands. And before we know it, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to shorten this story up. Before we know it, the guy had his own flow. It was surprising to me, you know. I, I heard hearsay that v Vino could flow, Vince, as we know, you know, could flow, and so I listened to him one day. I, I listened to a couple of his flow, and I was definitely impressed. I must say, and from there, it just kept growing. This this guy, his his plate just kept getting bigger, filling more and more. And we come around to visit, and the next thing you know, this dude was throwing a show. And when I say a show, I mean, I'm talking about like 16 bars, hooks, you know. He, he, he told me he was writing a lot. And he starts spitting these lyrics. And the lyrics, I was liking them. And I did my little disappearing act, and when I come back, this is what this guy, he had a kingdom form. So that's, I don't know, and to make it long to short, that's pretty much his history. You know. I don't know. It's, the guy's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we know, we know. But hey, what's your favorite story about Vino? What kind of, you know, kind of bullshit? My favorite story... <laughs> about Vino is how we had to take this guy under our wing, so to say. Because when you're in these streets in Chi-Town, the streets can teach you some things, some things good, some things bad. We didn't want the streets to teach him that much. We, we wanted to be the teachers so he can understand the teachings that was coming from the streets. Because the streets will teach you regardless. It ain't got nothing to do with uh, your age, uh, your income background. It has nothing. The streets are always going to be the streets. We didn't want the streets to teach this man 100%. St streets can get a little part of you. But we were stingy. We wanted the abundance of percentage of teachings to this young man. So that's what we did. We took him under our wing. So back to what you asked, what's, our, what's my, my best thought of him? Well, it was the one day we were all sitting in the car. We had, we had this old trusty car of ours in the family. They used to get us a lot of places. We were sitting in that car, we was playing, and if, if I can recall, I think it was when Biggie came out, he was with uh, Bad Boy, you know, Bad Boy first hit out, it was real hardcore, because you know, you had Puffy and Biggie and Mary and all of that. We were all sitting in the car, and we was just kind of like vibing, and you know, back then, because you're talking about way, way back, there wasn't really the blunts. 
You know what I'm saying? It was all about sitting back, smoking old school, if you know what I'm saying. So that's what we were doing. And also, to include putting him on, under our wing, we didn't want this guy to go out like in the streets as far as the streets teaching him. We didn't want the streets to get this man high. We didn't want this man to get high according to the street laws. We raised this guy to be respectable and to be a man and to understand right from wrong. So we didn't want him being taught by the streets. So therefore, when we got high, we got high, if you, if you know what I'm saying. He learned some things. He grew in some things and a lot of things he grew. And that was immediate gratification, I guess that's what you would call it, because we knew this guy was going to be somebody. We knew that he was going to take it to a different level other than what his peers, I want to say, in his age group were seeing. Because, see, I want to touch on that. A lot of people don't know hip-hop like Vino knows hip-hop. You know, when you say hip-hop, you're thinking automatically Wheezy or 2 Chains. You know, no disrespect to those guys at all. But, you know, the hip-hop that I know, you know, it, it was rooted from people like Tribe Called Quest, you know, uh, the Far Side. Um, 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 we, had, we had so many of them. We had uh, 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 Pete Rock, CL Smooth. You know, we had, a, we had a gang of them, you know. I'm talking about aside from the Eric B. and Rock Hems. We had more hip-hop. A, a hell of a lot more hip hop than we do now. We don't have any hip hop now. They want to say hip hop is dead. I don't want to say it's dead. It's hip hop is never. It's far, far from dead. It's it's at a. I don't know what you want to call it. It's a, it's, it's taking a nap. Hip hop is taking a nap, waking to be woken up. And I believe this guy Vino can wake up hip hop. Uh, he can spit some bars, make you think. Uh, he could come hardcore, make you think. And then he could spit something to the ladies, get a little sensitive on a smooth tip, still making you think. So the way I look at it, he's on a good path. He's on a good path. You know, it's, it's very prosperous for this, this, this guy here. And uh, I support him all the way. Well, that's what's up. That's what's up. But hey, what kind of uh turmoil or kind of bullshit, you know, man, did Vino come in the process of this kid growth? Uh, well, being from these shot town streets, it, it could be a lot of uh a lot of a lot, a lot of pain. It could be a lot of teachings, bad teachings at that. You know, again, these streets are no punk. Um, what I've heard, and, and this is something when I reconnected uh, with Vino because I did a little disappearance stage of my own. But when I reconnected with this guy Vino, I discovered that he had had gotten shot. And um, from there, I was, you know, I was really shocked, you know, because a person, you know, you don't really think of good people getting shot. You only think of bad people, of course, if they're going to get shot. Bad people are the ones to get shot. So uh, to hear this guy had harm coming to him was, was really a dramatic wake-up call for me because I didn't think it was possible. I know this guy's not that type of individual. He doesn't uh, uh, hurt anyone. He doesn't cause any harm to anyone. So to hear that this guy had got harmed was really disturbing to me. And what was even more disturbing was I wasn't around for this. You know, I wasn't there to be a help of any of any kind of any sort I wasn't there to talk to you know I wasn't I wasn't there to give my opinion you know or I just wasn't there so 
to me personally, that was a, a, a really a, a lacking on my part, even though trials and tribulations in life itself will tend to separate people, individuals, families, however you want to call it. But I kind of took a little, a little personal, you know, a little personal responsibility on, on things like that. But on top of that, the good news, the brighter side, the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel is this guy bounced back like 150 times more stronger. And, and it woke him up even more. He, he learned it was a lesson learned out of that. And that's what I appreciate out of this guy is the, the passion, you know, the, the, the seriousness, you know, about this music thing, you know, about hip hop about his teachings that we help to, to help him groom this guy, you know, and it, it, it looks good. It feels good. It's nice.